Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the decisive day of Lindores Abbey Rapid Challenge 2020, day three of the finals. In the first day, uh, Hikaru Nakamura managed to win against Daniel Dubov and took a lead. Uh, and then Daniel Dubov yesterday uh, won against Hikaru Nakamura. So we had a draw in the mini matches, one to one. And today everything has to be decisive as the players play until two won uh, mini matches. Uh, and so so very very exciting stuff and also I guarantee that the games today were also very exciting and everything it looks like you know it was uh, just pre-arranged however it's 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 very exciting and I would like to show you the second game because first game was uh, drawn and then the second game uh, was decisive very interesting and as Peter Leko said this was a shocking game and shocking results uh, especially after you know beginning of the game so uh, without further ado let's see what happened on the board uh, Hikaru Nakamura play as white and he opened with e4 and Daniel Dubov answered with c5 so sicilian defense again and now knight on f3 knight on c6 and again not d4 and also not c3 as was played yesterday by hikaru nakamura but rather knight on c3 and now g6 so uh daniel dubov goes for sicilian dragon accelerated sicilian dragon without move d6 as this you know it's the it's the one tempo which can be uh pretty interesting used in the many many variations we have d4 c takes on d4 knight takes on d4 and now bishop on g7 attacking the knight twice so we have bishop on e3 defending and now knight on f6 we have bishop on c4 developing the bishop on this beautiful diagonal and bobby fisher loved to do that uh, and now this is one of the most popular variations against sicilian dragon and here uh, i would like to show you first uh, how rich is the position in the tactical issues so for example knight on e4 but in this case it doesn't work but it explains the next move or black because here after knight on e4 d5 doesn't work because of bishop on b5 okay uh, and yes black can take the, the take the knight however after knight on c6 losing the exchange okay losing the exchange on a8 so uh this is not really great this is why we have castle first and now knight on e4 is an issue so this is why in this position we have b3 retreating uh, and now d5 wouldn't come with the fork on the bishop and the knight on e4 so just for your information uh, because it's good to know when you start to play some opening what are some main ideas what are some you know uh, traps and uh, inaccuracies which can lead to the the lost game we have rook on e8 a uh, very important move because first it prevents white from playing actually you know the battery very typical against sicilian dragon as bobby fisher said just create this battery exchange the dark square bishop um, and then attack on the king side and you're gonna win the game uh, however after rook on e8 this battery doesn't really work uh, because the the bishop on h6 can be met with the bishop on h8 okay and position of black is a uh, pretty solid this bishop uh, still can say stay on this diagonal and it's very very strong uh, so uh, instead of that white plays knight takes on c6 and how would you now uh, capture the knight the problem is you don't have really a choice because uh, b takes on c6 is losing the game because e5 and your knight has nowhere to go okay uh, this this square is controlled by the queen this square is controlled by the by the knight uh, back ranks is also all of this is covered only two squares however both of them are losing after after knight on h5 you have g4 so always you have to remember if you play um, accelerated dragon that e5 can be very very annoying and your knight can be trapped and also uh, if you think you can play knight on d5 then uh, I have bad news for you after knight on d5 c takes on d5 queen d5 the queen attacks the rook and not only because also f7 so you can save the rook but you're not gonna be in the pleasant position so uh, definitely uh, 
B takes on C6 is the huge blunder. So this is why we have D takes on C6. And the main line here is just, you know, exchange the queens uh, and now play F3. And this is very solid position and well-known position played uh, plenty of times. However, Hikaru goes for H3. And Daniel Dubov in the interview uh, actually said that he forgot what to play and how to continue the game. You know, wait for exchange, maybe exchange. It doesn't look really good. Uh, he played queen on C7. Uh, and now F4. And it seems like Hikaru Nakamura is very well prepared, you know, uh, and, uh, and Daniel Dubov starts to get into the worst position. We have b5 uh, and now e5 attacking the knight. And here Daniel Dubov didn't move the knight, uh, but rather play b4. And he actually set up a very nice positional trap because after e takes on f6, of course, not taking the knight, but e takes on f6. Uh, and here the bishop is under attack and bishop is pinned and also the knight is under attack so after queen on f3 defending uh, b takes on c3 now uh, taking the the b2 also is coming so uh, b takes on c3 f5 and now where to castle as white you cannot castle on the queen side that would be just you know the suicide and uh, and black probably would uh, attack pretty easily uh, and if castle on the king side is still much better position for black you know slicing all the position with this uh, with these beautiful bishops uh, and so definitely a really great game so uh, of course hikaru nakamura is uh, too experienced to fall in such a trap so he played knight on a Four. and now uh, knight on d5 as well and here in this position actually uh, if you think that white gonna win the pawn is not really great as idea because this bishop is the most powerful minor piece uh, on the chessboard so definitely white wanna keep this uh, on the board and it's not really win the pawn the problem is uh, after bishop takes on d5 c takes on d5 and queen takes on d5 is a really bad idea idea bishop b7 is coming and after queen on d2 uh, rook e on d8 kicking the queen even further queen on f2 and now a uh, queen on c6 attacking the knight attacking the pawn uh, on g2 so uh, white actually achieved nothing just lost the beautiful bishop place on b3 so uh, really not greatest idea we have queen on f3 defending the the bishop and now knight takes on e3 queen takes on e3 and now Daniel Dubov would love to do something with this bishop. This is very, very sad bishop, you know, uh, cannot open this diagonal. F6 is not possible because of this beautiful bishop, you know, preventing that. Also, G5 would be too early uh, because Hikaru didn't castle yet. So first, uh, Daniel Dubov wants to know uh, where Hikaru gonna castle. So first he play A5, just solidifying the pawns uh, on the queen side. And now Hikaru goes for the queen side castle. Uh, we have queen on a7. Daniel Dubov tried to exchange the pieces as he has the feeling that his position is 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 worse. So he wants to eliminate the queen from the board. Uh, and here queen on g1 was possible, for example, to exchange on g1, improving the position of the rook, prepare maybe uh, g4, f5, some attack on the king side. Uh, also queen on c5, that would be also possible. And after exchanging, the knight could jump on c5 so with tempo uh, very nice ideas however Hikaru Nakamura doesn't want to exchange the queens at all so he play queen on e4 uh, and now bishop on f5 and here taking the pawn on c6 as you already see that would be a disaster for two very important reasons because first if the if the pawn is taken uh, then after queen on e3 uh, checking the king uh, actually queen f4 winning this pawn very important pawn supporting e5 so uh, this pawn gonna be lost and these bishops 
gonna be deadly on these diagonals, but also the rook can come to c8. Okay, this is also a powerful idea and operates on the on the open uh, semi open c5. So that would be just disaster for white. So this is why Hikaru goes for queen on c4. Uh, and now we have queen on e3 anyway, but the queen at least support uh, f4. Uh, we have king on b1 because under the check, uh, bishop on e6 now attacking the queen. Uh, and here Hikaru says, okay, that was a good idea to exchange the queens and now exchange on d4. Uh, and at least after exchanging, he, uh, you know, moved the rook also on d4. Uh, so now he's ready to double the rooks. And here, rook a on d8 and it's critical position on the board uh, actually uh, what hikaru could play is rook on d8 and after rook on d8 just exchange these bishops uh, and this doesn't look really great for for black however daniel dubov in the interview said that that he was fine with this position uh, he wanted just play g5 so now it would be possible of course uh, h4 first uh, so he wanted to play rook on d2 that would be pretty active so rook g1 defending the pawn uh, and now h6 still preparing g5 Knight on c5 doesn't really matter. Attacking e6 pawn, not really important pawn. So g5 still uh, still is on the board. Uh, h takes on g5, h takes on g5 uh, and g3, let's say. G takes on f4, g takes on f4. Just simplify the position. Now king f7 defending e6 and everything is fine. Now after king on c1, rook h2, then bishop on g6 attack, put the pressure on f4. The rook can join also uh, and Daniel Dubov just said, okay, and I'm winning, and I'm winning here. However, the engine says, you know, plus one for white. However, Daniel Dubov told, okay, this is the winning position for me. So I'm not sure who is right, you know, engine or Daniel Dubov. However, uh, this was pretty interesting to see how the super grandmaster thinks about the particular position. Uh, but in this position, actually, Hikaru Nakamura told, okay, D file, open D file is much more important. So he play rook H on D1. And we have exchange of the rooks. So rook on D4, rook on D4, and now bishop on C8. So Daniel Dubov don't want to exchange this, um, these bishops now. Uh, and now we have knight on B6 attacking this bishop. Uh, and here... Uh, g5 could be potentially played, uh, however the position is pretty complicated because after bishop on a4, uh, let's say white actually, uh, you know, ignores this, these threats, g takes on f4, bishop takes on c6, the rook would have to go to f8, very inactive square, and after knight on c4, and actually defending this e5 pawn, okay? Uh, and here is the problem because also attacking a5, so white gonna create some passed pawns on the uh, on the queen side. So uh, let's say a4, trying to, you know, release the, the at least the bishop and making some counterplay on the king side. Bishop a4, bishop b7, uh, and let's say after rook on f4, bishop on g2, and the game can continue and it's, it's pretty complicated and still rich in ideas. So it was possible. However, Daniel Dubov told, okay, this is just too early. And first he plays C5. The problem with this move is uh, Hikaru Nakamura could go for Rook on C4. It's quite an intuitive move as he fight uh, so much for the for the open d file to have the control however in this position rook on c4 is the strongest move and after rook on d8 yes uh, he gives up the d file however uh, it doesn't really matter for now is a checkmate but after a4 uh, b takes on a3 just rook takes on c5 okay rook d1 let's say king on a2 uh, bishop on b7 as the bishop is attacked twice now uh, but now bishop d5 bishop d5 actually forcing to exchange the bishops because uh, the bishop have to go to some inactive square which is really bad for black so uh, forcing to exchange and now after rook on d5 forcing to exchange the rooks the rook cannot move because uh, rook d8 with check and after bishop on f8 the the knight can jump to d7 and win that bishop 
okay so rook on d5 would be forced as well knight on d5 and now uh, a takes on b2 knight takes on e7 uh, and after knight on d5 white stands slightly better here this pawn gonna fall uh, this pawn definitely gonna fall as well and this pass pawn have uh, not this way uh, but really straight you know straight way to c8 this, this way definitely not the greatest way for the pawn so uh, this was possible for white uh, and it was rather forced you know uh, so uh, definitely rook on c4 could be could be very very annoying however we have rook on d2 very passive move move by hikaru nakamura uh, and now g5 so daniel says okay now i am ready for that uh, and here hikaru told okay this is this was this was very bad so i'm gonna go back to d5 so now i'm gonna you know uh, go after these pawns but now it's too late uh, because we have g takes on f4 rook takes on c5 and now f3 uh, and now the idea of playing that, of course, is splitting the pawn chain. Uh, and now the main threat, of course, is, you know, advancing the pawn uh, and, you know, queening. So this is the main threat. So white have to take on f3 and now bishop on h3. So creating the passed pawn. Black already have passed pawn and just want to, you know, push this passed pawn. Uh, we have rook on a5. So now, as you see, Hikaru Nakamura waste couple of tempi here. Um, and that was not really great for him. We have rook on d8 now targeting the, the first rank. So a4, b takes on e3. White already are in quite difficult position. Knight on d5 probably would be better. Uh, try to prevent of, of, of moving the, the rook to the first rank. However, it would not work. But after e6, knight on f4, uh, rook on d1, king a2. Uh, a takes on b2 queening is the is the threat king on b2 bishop f5 uh, and at least rook a8 and black would be forced to move this bishop not on the e5 but rather to f8 uh, uh, and white would have the time to consolidate the position play something like uh, knight on h5 then maybe uh push the f4 pawn and this pawn would be uh would be protected and now uh white would have the you know the past pawn and could try to you know to to attack and uh, would be very difficult as black stands still slightly better uh however at least this pawn would be would be blocked by the knight and uh and it's still very very complicated position however hikaru played b takes on a3 he want to create a very fast pass pawn on his own uh, we have e6 now very important move here so uh, any e6 ideas are not possible now which would be very very unpleasant and i would like to you know uh, show you what is going on in this position so first this rook actually you know take care of e5 which is very very important uh, because if the rook is moved wherever let's say rook on a7 doesn't make much sense uh, however after rook on d1 king a2 bishop e5 we have the mating ideas okay on a1 so this is the problem so keep in mind what is going on on the board right now so after e6 we have king on a2 the mating ideas are still on the board and now Daniel Dubov just pushed the pawn. He thought, okay, I'm just gonna push the pawn and win the game. Uh, we have rook on a4. As you see, this is the problem. Rook on a4, stopping, you know, advancing the pawn, uh, but also giving this pawn on e5, which Dubov, of course, grab. Uh, and here, Daniel Dubov said, okay, I calculated uh, the, the rook on h4 idea, which looks pretty logical okay uh, however it doesn't work because uh, white can win this pawn and it, the pawn cannot be protected as this pawn on f3 uh, protecting g4 so the so the bishop cannot advance however rook on d1 and as you see 
this is you know still on the board this checkmate is still on the board so white would have to play something like bishop on c4 making a space for the king uh, but after bishop on f5 the new idea is coming uh, attacking the pawn on c2 and once it's taken checkmate is still on the board as the bishop would defend uh, b3 uh, and bishop on d3 doesn't solve any problems because now rook a1 winning this knight okay so after king on b3 just winning the knight and and of course the game so yeah white now now can take the pawn but it doesn't matter so this uh daniel dubov actually saw however uh peter Spiedler asked him but have you seen uh rook on a5 did you see that uh, and he said, uh, yeah, of course I missed that. The problem is the the, the bishop is skewered now uh, and now this pawn can be taken. After bishop on g7, this pawn can be easily taken because there are no more tricks. Yes, rook on d1 still have the threat uh, on a1, but now bishop on c4 and bishop f5 doesn't work because white actually can sacrifice the exchange. Uh, and look at this, this pawn blocking two pawns, two black pawns, and white have two passed pawns, okay? So, so pretty powerful. Yes, these are the minor pieces, but still, you know, uh, they can be very powerful and supportive for this pawn. So definitely that would be very, very interesting. However, we have rook on e4 also attacking the bishop uh, with the idea of defending the first rank uh, and also maybe you know going in the front of the pawn uh, so that was the hikaru nakamura but quite passive uh, idea as you see we have bishop on f6 retreating but also supporting the the march of the pawn so rook on e1 now by hikaru nakamura and h4 as planned rook on g1 delivering the check king on f8 and now knight on c4 uh, we have bishop on f5 making also the the path for the for the pawn but now rook on h1 and here uh, h3 wouldn't be that great because after that knight can jump to e3 attack the defender uh, and this bishop has nowhere to go have to retreat uh, and now white would simply pick up this this passed pawn so it's too early this is why first we have rook on d4 supporting over protecting actually uh, this pawn uh, and now knight on e3 attacking the bishop bishop on g6 and here a4 so uh, hikaru nakamura tries to push his pawn however in this position uh, you know, we have the pawns, uh, past pawns on two opposite sides and this pair of bishop will always be on time, you know, to just stop this, this advancing, okay? So uh, definitely uh, it's very, very difficult for white to push, especially the rook. Uh, is in the defensive mode in the front of the of the of the black past pawns not behind own past pawn like, like it should be so definitely black is in much much better position we have bishop on h5 now going after this past pawn uh, with the idea of attacking the rook and also controlling a8 you know promotion square uh, and here, yes, rook on h3 could be played, however, it would not help, uh, because after rook on f4, this pawn is attacked twice, uh, and yes, knight on g4 can be played, but of course, just simple exchange, and, and this pawn never gonna, gonna you know, uh, come to a8, that this bishop is enough to, of course, uh, stop it and, uh, and win the game. So Hikaru tries to just push the a pawn and we have a5, bishop on f3 as planned uh, and now rook on f1 attacking this bishop and also skewering this to, to win another bishop but it's of course a simple defense, we have rook on f4, Hikaru Nakamura tries uh, to continue the march of his pawns but of course uh, it cannot be you know advanced anymore because after bishop on d4 this bishop not only attacks the, the knight uh, on e3 is the main threat but also control a7 uh, and here 
here we have rook on e1 uh, and after rook on e4 he just resigned the game he cannot do anything to save the knight the knight gonna be lost uh, if the knight moves for example to g2 just to protect the rook uh, then of course it's gonna be taken for free uh, the rook gonna be still defended so no problem uh, and now uh, what Hikaru could play here actually he could try some tricks but he was very very low in time uh, but Knight on g2 is the is the most attractive move. Now, of course, the knight cannot be taken because rook is hanging, but very interesting line, rook on f5, okay? And knight h4, it looks like white gonna win uh, the exchange or uh, the bishop. However, rook on a5 with check. And now look at this. This idea is still on the board. That would be a checkmate. If the king moves to b1, that would be a checkmate. So the only way to stop that is throwing the bishop on a4, blocking the check. And after rook takes on a4, king b3, bishop c6 defends the rook okay so that is the idea still white of course can play something like you know uh rook on f4 uh actually pinning the the bishop and of course f3 is coming however that would be you know exchanging the the pawn for the bishop and also this pawn gonna fall uh, and uh, black gonna win with these two connected past pawns. So, uh, so this is the idea. Uh, black is still better, but that would be more complicated at least. Uh, however, uh, in this position, uh, Hikaru Nakamura didn't find this move. He played rook on e1 and he resigned after rook on e4. So first game was drawn and second game for Dubov. Uh, and tomorrow I'm gonna show you uh, another games are this was really really exciting final so if you don't want to miss that just press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one